Hello and welcome to another helpful tech vid. As per request, this video is going to cover some LVM. LVM stands for Logical Volume Manager and more and more distributions are not only rolling this in but actually incorporating it in the very beginning. You know, like when you go to install Ubuntu or Debian or CentOS, I believe CentOS is one of the earliest adopters. Uh, it will prompt you when you're installing if you want to set up your partition table with LVM. And that's, I mean, there's some advantages to LVM. It's kind of cool. You can quickly create snapshots and all of that fun stuff. So essentially what I have here is um, a 500 gigabyte hard drive in a machine. And I've already installed Debian, as you can see here. and at that point I set it up for LVM. Now one thing that you can do is you can issue PV display and that'll show you your physical volumes available to you. And if you look there, there's uh, what's left of my 500 gig hard drive. Now with LVM it's important to note that your boot partition cannot be an LVM formatted partition. Uh, usually when you go through the setup and you choose I want to you know do a guided setup with LVM it'll automatically create either an EXT2 or EXT3 partition of approximately 100 to 200 megabytes where it stores the grub bootloader or lilo bootloader or whatever you use so what I did is I did a custom partition table and set up dev SDA7 as the majority of the space on the hard drive the rest of it's just sitting on a, a regular partition. Uh, and the reason I did it that way is basically to do the instructional video. If I put everything on um, one partition, there I have to unmount to do some of the things I'm going to be doing in this video. Uh, and obviously you can't unmount the root partition that you're currently logged in as. So I set it up in a way that we can kind of play around. Um, you wouldn't necessarily have to set it up this way in a production environment, but for instructional purposes, I, I kind of had to. So I have a PV display and I have my 458.31 gigabyte hard drive. Now I have no volume groups and I have no logical volumes. It kind of cascades. You have to have a PV to have a VG. You have to have a VG to have an LV and respectively that stands for physical volume, volume group, and logical volume. The first thing that we want to do to actually be able to use this space is create a volume group and you can do that with VG create and you would specify a volume group name so I'm just going to call this LVM and then I'm going to specify the partition. Now I'm going to tell you right now there may be some going back and forth and I'm going to try to edit this video as best I can. Um, I personally do not use LVM on that frequent of a basis and even when you do use LVM you don't necessarily need to know um, the ins and outs of it because from the get go you kind of set it up and then you know it may be months or years before you have to do anything with it. So I'm going to create LVM or the VG let's see if it lets me do that with that command and it does so now if I do a VG display I have a volume group called LVM and there's my VG size right there 458.31 gigabytes so now that I have the volume group set up now I can create a logical volume and I can do that with LV create and I have to specify a size here and there's two ways you can do this. I'll show you one way and then I'll remove it and I'll show you the other way. So I'm going to do an LV create uh, dash L. I want 100 gigs in that. And I'm going to name it and I'm going to call it, let's just call it data. And you have to specify the volume group in there. So LVM uh, and I believe it's dash N. There we go. So now if I do an LV display, I have a 100 gigabyte LVM there. So that leaves me with roughly 358 gigabytes or so um, in the volume group that I could use. So you may ask yourself, well, why didn't you do it, create the whole volume group? Well, I'm, I'm going to show you how to do that now. So that's created 
and I can't use it yet I would have to create a file system on it so what I'm gonna do is do LV remove dev LVM data yes we want to remove it it's removed now if we do an LV display it'll say nothing there's nothing in there okay so now if I do LV create dash L plus 100 percent free I know that works yeah uh, then I do LVM and say name data it creates it and then I do LV display and there's the full 458.31 gigabytes now again you would have to do a, a make fs.ext4 and specify this LV path so what I'm gonna do here is I'm going to remove the LV again I'm gonna go back and I'm gonna create my smaller one and it's created so now I can make FS dot ext4 oops dev LVM data alright so now that's a usable file system that I can use now if I do an LS root here I have created two folders a production folder and a backup folder and I'm going to use these as mount points. We'll get to backup in a moment, but if I do mount dev LVM data to prod, should mount. Now I can CD into prod. That stands for production, do an LS. I have a lost and found folder. I'm going to touch example.txt. And now that's in there. Now if I come back here, one folder, and I do LV create dash L, we'll call it, let's see, we'll do a DF dash H really quick and, and look. I'm using 188 megabytes of um, that prod space. So if I do LV create dash L 200M, dash s and what that means is snapshot so I'm going to take a snapshot of my created LVM that's currently mounted and it is currently mounted as you can see there so I can take a live snapshot of it and call it name dash n name backup dev LVM data and I've created that backup and that's why you need that extra space in your VG you you can't have your VG full of LVs if you want to be able to use that extra space create snapshots or something like that so if you had say a terabyte of hard drive space you could use 500 gigabytes and always keep a snapshot of your primary a full snapshot of your primary on the other 500 gigabyte space basically set up a cron job and remove the the backup LV create the new snapshot essentially so I have a hundred gigabytes there if I mount dev LVM backup to backup and I do an LS backup and an LS prod you'll note that the contents are the exact same because I created a snapshot so essentially, it, the point of a snapshot, of course, is if anything were to ever go wrong in your file system, you can always restore from the snapshot. So now if we look at mount, we have both of ours uh, mounted. So I'm going to U-mount backup. And I'm going to show you how to expand a logical volume and how to shrink a logical volume. So I'm going to do two expansions because what I want to do is show you how to use your entire um, virtu uh, I'm sorry, volume group. And I also want to show you how to take and merge two storage devices essentially into one logical volume 
So basically what I've got here is that 450 gigabyte partition plus I have a 32 gigabyte thumb drive plugged into the same machine. What I'm going to do is make the system think that that is one actual volume, one partition that it can write to. So in order to do that, the first thing I want to do is remove the backup snapshot. So I'm going to do LV remove dev LVM backup. And now if I do an LV display, I have that. Now what I do now is LV extend plus, I'm sorry, dash L plus 100% free dev LVM data and now if I do an LV display I have a 458 gigabyte uh, logical volume where before I only had 100 gigabytes now we're not 100% done in resizing this because the file system still thinks that it's only uh, 100 gigabytes so to fix that we do resize 2FS dev LVM data without any uh, other parameters. You could resize it to anything really larger or smaller and resize 2FS is a very important command because if you're going to shrink the LV we actually have to shrink the file system before shrinking the LV otherwise bad things happen. And I know what this is going to do. The first thing it's going to tell me is I have to run Oh, usually it tells me I have to run the file system check. So now if I do a DF minus H, notice that I didn't U-mount the prod. So prod should still be mounted, and there's our available 432 gigabytes of space. So if we want to shrink it, that's when we actually have to unmount it. So what we have to do is U-mount prod, resize 2FS to something that we know is going to be larger than the amount of space that we have used, um, but smaller than the ultimate size that we want the LV to be. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to shrink this LV to 50 gigabytes. All right. Now we're only using 198 megabytes, so I could go anywhere from to be on, to err on the safe side, uh, anywhere from 500 megabytes up to. Uh, the 50 gigabytes but I'm gonna say let's go 30 gigabytes oh I'm sorry not zero data there we go so that's gonna resize the file system and that's where it tells you you have to check the file system first so that's gonna run through and check for any errors on the disk make sure that we can actually do the resize of the partition. And then we can, we can shrink it to 30 gigabytes. Okay, now that file system has been shrunk. So what I can actually do now is an LV display and it's still the LV is still 458 gigs but the file system is 30 gigs you should be able to shrink it while it's mounted but I'm not gonna well let, what the hell let's try it alright so if I do a DF to SH now you're gonna see that the size is 30 gigs used 172 I don't know why that changed but it did so let's do LV reduce dash L 50 G because remember I said I wanted to do uh, 50 gigabyte LV dev LVM data doesn't like that perhaps it's a capital L there we go and it's resized now if I do an LV display I got 50 gigs now if I do a resize 2FS mind you if you remember correctly DF dash H 30 gigabyte file system, 50 gigabyte LV. So if I do a resize 2 FS dev LVM data without any extra parameters, it will automatically fill up the file system to its maximum size. So there's our 50 gigs. All right, so now 
we're going to expand it again four hundred and fifty eight gigs didn't expand the file system so we're gonna do a resize 2fs dev LVM data and note that you if you're expanding you can do it online you can do it while this file system is mounted but if you're shrinking you you do have to u-mount it first do your file system check and then you can shrink the file system then you can shrink the LV then you can remount and then expand your file system to the full size because if you notice you know these you don't have full-on exact measurements if you shrink an LV to 50 gigabytes or I'm sorry if you shrink a file system to 50 gigabytes and then you try to shrink the LV to match 50 gigabytes it's probably not going to work out very well uh, because that you're not being very precise and of course all the systems want very very precise input so that's why I say if you're going to shrink it shrink the file system to something less than you want the ultimate LV to be but larger than the disk space that you're actually using then you shrink the LV to the full size that you're aiming for then you resize the file system again expanding it to a hundred percent of what's available to it so as it sits right now we have dev SDA 7 and that's set up for LVM already we have a volume group called LVM and that's 458 gigs and then we have a logical volume of the same size as the the volume group so what I want to do is I want to add my thumb drive to this volume group. I need 30 extra gigs of storage, 32 uh, extra gigs of storage. I could have done this with a 128 gig thumb drive. Um, I've done it with external hard drives up to 2 terabytes. So it's not just, you know, your little Pitlin 32 gigabytes just for the sake of saving some time on the video. I chose the one of the smallest ones I have that you would actually notice a difference in size. So to do that, I've already got the thumb drive plugged in. I believe it's originally formatted in NTFS, and we can't have that. We have to have this formatted in LVM. So the first thing you need to do is you need to find its identifier, and the identifier is always going to start with slash dev, and it'll either be an HDA or an SDA. Now, if you're familiar with Linux, you can skip this part, but essentially what you have is SDA is the hardware designator. It's the drive. So SDA is a drive, and the number indicates the partition that it was set up. So if you set up, you know, slash boot, that's going to be most likely SDA1 or SDB1. And then, you know, your root file system, that's going to be your second partition as you configured it. So that's going to be SDA2 and so on and so forth. So what I need to do is a dmessage grep SD, and that should show me all of my um, drives. So I have... SDA, that's our 500 gigabyte that we already have set up and configured. Now we come down here to SDB and 32 uh, gigabytes. That's our thumb drive. That's the guy that we want. And if you look a few lines further down, you'll notice there's an SDB1 listed. So this thumb drive is already partitioned. So what we can do is FDisk dev SDB, no partition number. We're partitioning the disk, not the partitions, obviously. So FDisk SDB, um, and that shows you, you enter a whole new prompt, and you can do a P, you can do M to list out what, you, what your options are, you can do a P to print the partition table. So if you look here, it's um, NTFS, which I suspected, or external FAT, and that's not going to work. We have to do LVM, and for some reason, it's also marked as bootable. That's weird, but whatever. Um, so we can do D to delete a partition, and it's already selected partition 1, um, because that's the only partition that was there. If there were multiple partitions, it would ask us which number we want to select. So now if we do a P, the partition's gone. Now note that the thumb drive hasn't had anything actually modified to it yet. Before you actually write anything, you have to issue the W command at this prompt here. 
if you don't want to make the modifications, uh, you would hit Q. So it's pretty cool because you can make all sorts of modifications and nothing actually gets written until you hit W to go through. And if you want to bail, you can do Q and it won't write anything to the partition table. But what we want to do is create a new one. So we do N and it's going to be primary and you didn't select the defaults all the way through this. Now this is going to use the whole thumb drive. So if you want to do something different, you're going to have to make sure that you pay attention to those prompts but I'm gonna do the whole thing so I just entered through and that accepted the default values of all of them so now if I do P I have uh, SDB1 and it's got an ID of 83 and it's Linux and that would be acceptable if we were doing an EXT4 or EXT3 or riser FS or something like that but that's not what we want to do we want to do an LVM so we have to set the type and you do that with T now when we go to T, it says you got to enter the hex code, so you can do a capital L to list your available hex codes. Now let's see, we got to find, there it is, Linux LVM. So we got 8E is our hex code that we want to enter, so we enter that. Now if we do a P, you'll notice the ID has changed to 8E, system is Linux LVM. So that's all we have to do, we just write that, and it's done. Now the partition table on the thumb drive is set up for LVM. So now what we do is a PV create dev oops SDB1 and as you can see that matches up with this guy here so we add that now if we do a PV display we have a uh, 30.06 gigabytes usable that's fine by me so now what we have to do is add that to the volume group. So to add that to the volume group, because right now it's not, you'll notice we still have our 458.31 gigabytes there. So to add that, we use VG extend the volume group that we want to add, the name of it. So that guy right there. And dev sdb1, I believe. Yes. Oh, I misspelled it here. V. There we go. So now if we do a VG display, you'll note that that size has increased to 488.36 gigabytes. Still not usable yet, though, because we have to add it to the LV. So if we do LV extend plus one, I'm sorry, dash lowercase l plus 100% free dev LVM data. Now it's increased to 488.36 gigabytes. If we do an LV display, you'll note that that's there as well. However, DF-H still shows only 452 gigabytes is the size. And you may have already guessed it. We have to resize the file system. Resize 2FS, dev, LVM, data. Sometimes it'll tell you you have to check it. Let's see. So everything's good. We resize the file system to 10 gigs. All right, that's done. So now we have to do an LV reduce dash size. And we're going to say 30 gigs because again, it's going, it's got to be larger um, then the file system size, otherwise you're going to run into issues. Then you have to specify, of course, the LV that you're trying to shrink. And it's done. So now what we have to do is a 
PV, we could do a PV display to verify because we're going to need the disk and partition designator here uh, for this par portion. So then what we do is a VG reduce. Actually, I'm going to do a VG display because I also need the VG name. So the VG name is LVM, which of course I've been using in the path this entire time, so I should have known that. So I'm going to do VG reduce LVM and then the d partition designator, so SDB1. So now if I do a VG display, I've subtracted that 30 gigabytes. So in the interest of getting my system up ASAP, uh, be able to mount that system again is I need to do an LV extend again to get it the proper size plus 100% free dev LVM data oops I forgot the dash L in that command and it's resized to 458.31 gigabytes so I can verify verify that with LV display proper size now I can mount it. Now I haven't resized the file system yet, but if you know you have enough space after the fact um, beyond what you've used to that compared to that resized file system, then you're okay. Um, and we can do an online file system resize when we're growing the file system. So I'm going to mount dev LVM data to prod. Start whatever services use that uh, file location path. And if we do a DF-H, you notice it's still 10 gigs. So I got to resize the file system, resize 2FS, dev, LVM, data. And again, if you don't specify a size after the fact, it'll just fill up as much as it can. So DF-H, we've reclaimed our 452 gigabytes. That thumb drive is not mounted, um, so I don't have to do anything with it. However, if you wanted to format it, again, back to something more usable than Linux LVM, say go back to um, NTFS, SDB, FDisk-Dev-SDB, we are going to delete the partition, we're going to create a new partition, we're going to primary, again, 100% of the disk space used, we need to set the type, let's see what it, it gave it already, Linux LVM, or Linux, yeah, so we need to set the type, we need to do a capital L, and somewhere in there is NTFS, I'm sure, uh, 7. So we're going to say 7, and now we do a print to make sure everything looks good. We do a W to write the partition, and now I can unplug that drive and use it elsewhere. So hopefully I wasn't too long-winded for you guys. Uh, there's quite a bit to cover, and of course repetition is best. If you plan on ever needing any of the steps done here, I would highly advise that you set up a virtual box VM or something like that uh, to begin with and do not practice on your production machine. Um, I've noticed uh, when I was stepping through some of the, the steps the first time around, you know, it's important, for example, whether you use a capital L or little l in your... Um, in your commands here like LV extend um, also it's important that you have a plus there as there are different different things happen for example um, so if you didn't have the plus there it would just expand to a certain point I forget what it is but like I say I would recommend that you play around with it I can't take the time to create videos to go through every single aspect of LVM because it does get kind of um, cumbersome. A number, another fun thing uh, to show you guys is PVS. And actually, I screwed up. Note that I formatted dev SDB, but I never removed it from the PV. So if I go to PV display right now, it's going to say it's there, the dev SDB. So to do that, you just do a PV remove dev SDB. And it may not let me do it because it's not physically there. Let's see. Okay, successfully wiped. So now if I do a PV display, there, it's missing. Now there's also, um, I've done this before and forgot to do it, and it, it was real ugly, but if I do a PV display dash help, um, there's somewhere in here, remove missing. 
or maybe that's in the VG. Let's try VG display. Uh, yeah, it'll come up. It actually tells you, and that's one of the cool things about it, is that it'll actually tell you what, you know, oh, this is missing, you have a problem here. Um, and you know, when I tried to resize the FS and it told me I had to do a file, file system check whenever that's required, it'll tell you. So it does give you a little bit of guidance. Um, there's also LVS and PVS and probably VGS. And that kind of gives you a quick glance at your um, what you have available, what you have used, uh, so on and so forth. If I were to shrink the LV and then shrink the VG, you would see that there's um, free space available there. So uh, those are some quick commands to kind of help you take an overview, high-level view of your uh, storage allocation and everything. Well, once again, I hope I wasn't too long-winded for you guys, and hopefully I gave you some really good and helpful information. Uh, as always, if you appreciate the work I do, appreciate this video, I would appreciate a like, subscribe, share, comment, uh, whatever your social media allows you to do. I would also appreciate it if you guys could hit up my website, www.helpfultechvids, that's V-I-D-S dot com. There you can read some articles, uh, blog posts, make donations, uh, vote on what you want the next video to be, so on and so forth. It's always nice to have somebody drop by and leave a comments and, and show some appreciation. Make me feel better than I'm you know, not out here doing this for nothing. Uh, the views have been great likes and shares and subscribes have all been great i really appreciate that guys really um so hopefully this this video was helpful for you and uh, as always we'll catch you on the next video